So this book by one of the biggest music producers of all time is actually unlike anything you can read on music production because it's more about human creativity and the ways you can access creative state to do your best work. So for those of you who are not familiar with Rick Rubin, he started his career by co-founding Def Jam Recordings with Russell Simmons and proceeded to launching careers for LL Cool J, Public Enemy and Beastie Boys. Then he moved into another genre and started working with metal bands. He worked with Slayer and Danzig and made huge contribution to the metal world. And then he made a transition again and started working with country, rock and pop artists, including Johnny Cash, Red Hot Chili Peppers and Tom Petty. And more recently, he worked with Ed Sheeran, Lana Del Rey and James Blake. His ability to work in so many different genres is just remarkable. But it turns out, actually, throughout his journey, it was not about production for him in the technical sense. It seems like spirituality has been central not only to his life, but his music creation process as well. He said that he has been practicing transcendental meditation since he was 14, and generally in his life he's been exploring spirituality quite a lot. And as revealed in this book, he got quite far. So let's explore five key takeaways that every musician can learn from Rick Rubin. Everyone is a creator. If we look at life from a very grand perspective, we will see a limitless universe where the creative process of life is unfolding. The birth and death of stars and planets, comets and black holes existing in the endless cosmos. And here are we on our little big planet Earth, where trees blossom, ants run their construction works, and humans do all sorts of things. Making breakfast, saying goodbye, renovating a house or making art. An interesting thing Rick Rubin writes, whether or not we are formally making art, we're all living as artists. In a broad sense, that we're all creators by the fact of being alive. From the smallest to the biggest things we do, we are involved into the creative unfolding process of the universe. But the ability to create art requires higher sensitivity and an ability to tune into the world in a more subtle way than what we do in everyday life. And you can refine this sensitivity. One of the ways to do this is to practice engaging into higher awareness in everyday life. Try actively paying attention to what you're doing and fully being where you are at the moment. Be curious. When you are making some food, driving or walking in the park, try being fully present and very likely you will find not only you will feel more joy in your life, but it will also be easier to be creative. And if your life becomes art, how will your art look like? You are not a conductor, you are being conducted. So we as music creators are also a part of the unfolding process of the universe. And ultimately when we create music, we are not the conductors, we are being conducted. Rick Rubin writes, In this great unfolding, ideas and thoughts, themes and songs and other works of art exist in the aether and ripen on schedule, ready to find expression in the physical world. We are all translators for messages the universe is broadcasting. Many very well-known musicians describe the creative process in a similar way. For example, Sting, it start with with this three chords, and then I just go on an adventure with it, you know, and just find it. It, it. it writes itself, you know, and if you just have to be open to it, just have to be in a state of grace where it, the, the music will tell you where it, where it goes next. You know, How do you know I'm supposed to go there? I just do. Chris Martin. Cause, you know, I've, I've I've got I've been given that gift from the universe or from God or whatever mm. you want to believe in mm. that ideas for songs get sent to me through wherever they get sent from and then I take them to the rest of the band and then we layer it up and that's how we do it. Bob Weir. A, a song is a life form and it comes and visits us yes. and uh, you know, it comes through certain people for whatever its reasons are. It's coming to this world and it's coming to sniff around and, and visit and uh, you know those those characters in those songs you know they, they come and they tell their stories and mm -hmm. they just want to be heard. Tommy Emmanuel. I need to be open so whatever's in the universe that's that uh, i am hoping is going to flow through me and flow out to you and make you feel great that's what i'm trying to do i'm not i'm not trying to say anything about myself i'm trying to say i'm open and willing 
give me something to work on, you know? and many others. So fundamentally, in the process of making music, we are receivers of ideas that come to us and flow through us into the physical world. Songs come from the outside. This one is linked to the previous one. So if you are a part of the process of the universe unfolding, then there is an inexhaustible source of everything where also musical ideas live. Being a music creator means tuning in to a state in which you can receive those ideas and then translate them into the physical world. So musical ideas come from the outside, from the source. It's a subtle shift in perspective from I'm constructing a song from a set of predetermined pieces I have to I'm feeling an idea and letting it construct itself using me as a tool. This way, from being limited, you turn to being unlimited. Negotiation between the artist and the craftsperson. Now, this one is just so true. I bet you'll be like, yeah, this definitely happened to me, but now someone has put it in words. So there are two aspects of yourself which have to kind of coexist and negotiate in the process of music creation. The artist and the craftsperson. So the first one has the vision of an idea and the second one has to actually make it real. And this is a tricky part. Because, for example, you can hear a sound in your head, but not be able to find the right preset or the right sample for it. Or you can write a catchy melody and get stuck with lyrics to fit. Or you may envision yourself performing a song in a certain way. But when you sing it, it turns out completely different. And Rick Rubin answers why. There is no direct conversion from abstract thought to the material world. The work is always an interpretation. So don't get upset if you cannot achieve something exactly the way you envision it or you're hearing it. Oh, how many times I've struggled with this. Sometimes it's better to accept what is and settle with the current best alternative to keep moving. If the idea is there, there is a way for it to get out. Even if it's something that you're not really happy with in the end. Don't blame the idea or yourself or anything. Just keep moving forward and keep creating. Who knows, maybe in three months time, when you create another track, you will get a hint for the previous one, or maybe not. In any case, being creative is the point. The hardest part is already out of the way. When you try creating without the connection to source, the process will very likely be tiring, will flow with difficulty, and also will require a lot of hard work and pushing through with real stress. Or you may find that the creativity doesn't flow at all and you just feel uninspired. And most importantly, viewing music as something that you do completely by yourself and from yourself actually implies limitations. I am being limited by what I have. But if you see yourself as an intermediary between the ethereal world where music lives and our physical world, the possibilities are unlimited. As many ideas the universe is willing to pass through you, you are willing to receive. And the universe is generous. So now that you know this, the hardest or the simplest but definitely fundamental part has been completed. You can stay firmly on this ground and keep drawing ideas from this unlimited source. And this wraps it up. Of course, this is just a taster of what Rick Rubin has to say. So if anything from this video resonated with you, consider getting the book and reading it for yourself. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe. <laughs> yeah, that's what they say.